What's up guys? In this video I'm going to be going over the new iOS 5 features. This is the final version, no betas or anything like that, uh, that was released by Apple in October. I know I made a previous video like this over the summer running down some of the features, but I just thought I'd let you know what I think about the newest version, the final version. And I kind of want to hear your thoughts on this new iOS by Apple. So before I go over some of the main features, um, I just want to let you know what I think about it in terms of speed. It definitely, for me, definitely, definitely, definitely lives up to the hype as the fastest iOS and most comprehensive iOS there is ever to up to date. I think it's way faster than all the previous versions. Definitely, definitely, definitely works out a lot better than the other iOS's and I think it makes the devices an overall better experience for everyone. Um, there is no lag at all almost and it just works great compared to the other iOS's. Um, but yeah, let's get to some of the features. Um, I did make a video so I'll put that in the description um, for you guys to check out if you want to because I go more in depth into the features. But I'm basically going to be doing the same thing here. So. First feature is new notifications. Basically in iOS it used to just be a little pop-up bubble right in the center of the screen that showed you what your new notification actually was. Now actually though Apple kind of copied Android a little bit and uh, greatly improved upon the Android notification center by swiping down with your top finger from the top of the screen you can see all of your notifications. Now this is running on my iPad first gen but this works on all the iOS devices and as you can see you can see all of your notifications in one simplified interface. Um, somebody wants to be my friend on Game Center right now but you can see your text messages, your emails, all your friend requests, um, every app notification in here. You can even have your weather widget and your stock widget in there which I'm sure Apple will expand upon in the future. But it is a great interface. It's a lot better than the previous versions um, of iOS. Also if you go into here into settings there's a notification interface in which you can reorder the uh, manually or by time the apps that show your notifications. You can also turn off any of these notifications completely. Um, you go into it, you can turn on old types of notifications, the reminder type, which is the new type, or none at all. Um, so they really give you full customization of your notifications now, which is a great thing. I like it a lot. And hopefully Apple expands on this into the future. Um, the next with the next um, actual feature that I want to show you guys is iMessage. Um, basically, iMessage, what it is, is BBM for iOS. Um, if you guys don't know what BBM is, it's basically a platform that's like texting, but it actually uses data, so you can use it over Wi-Fi and over 3G or 4G. And it essentially shows you when you're uh, when you're when someone is typing to you when you receive a message. So it's kind of like um, I aming someone on Facebook or something like that. So Apple actually implemented this in a feature called iMessage. As you can see, it looks a lot like the um, texting interface. Let me go ahead and slide and delete here. Um, but it looks a lot like the texting interface on the iPhone uh, and on the iPhone. And they now added this to the iPod Touch and the iPad. So you can generally just type a message to somebody, uh, just like texting, and it it comes up completely free. Um, you can do it over Wi-Fi or 3G or your data connection. Um, you can even send photos as you can see and it really will save people a lot of money and I think it's a great feature. Um, I know a lot of people are going to like this and hopefully it does end up becoming like BBM because I know once I get my new iPhone I'm definitely going to be using BBM or iMessage and I won't even care about BBM so I think this will drive a lot of people to buy iOS devices. And it is finally nice to have messaging on your iPhone or iPod Touch and iPad uh, not just the iPhone so I can talk to people on this or in my iPod when I'm in school, which is nice. Um, the next feature I wanted to talk about is um, newsstand. Newsstand is basically like iBooks only in magazine form. Um, as you can see, basically, um, if you click here, you can go to the newsstand store, um, and it, it'll load up here. Just give it a sec. Um, Basically, as you can see, you can download all of these magazines free, um, and then they will show up in your newsstand, and you can read them just like that. It's really simple. I think it's a great interface, um, and it will show you, it'll like update, if you have like the New York Times in here, it'll update daily and show you the new daily paper, which is really cool. I like that a lot. I think a lot of people will use it. Um, next off is Reminders. Um, basically, what Reminders is, is a app that you can set reminders for yourself. It's pretty self-explanatory and remind yourself to do stuff. It's like an 
up-to-date to-do list app on the iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch. Um, I have heard that Siri, which is coming to the iPhone 4S, will greatly use this to actually have a voice come up and talk to you when you have to do something, which is really cool. But you can set reminders just by typing on the iPad and iPod Touch and the iPhone 4 as well if you don't have the iPhone 4S. So that's going to be a good feature. It's going to help a lot of people out. Um, and yeah, I think a lot of people are going to like it. Another feature that I can't really show you is Mail, but Mail, basically, they just updated it. They made it an easier interface, uh, better to type, um, and more uh, self-explanatory. It's easier to use now. Um, another feature that I want to show you is actually Safari. Um, so Safari on the iPad and on the iPhone and iPod Touch is much, much, much faster. But on the iPad specifically, they have added tabbed browsing. Um, and I, as you can see, I have tabs open right here, which is a lot of uh, fun, actually. And I will actually load a web page here to show you how fast it is. So I'll go ahead and put on ESPN here. ESPN. Go ahead and click it. And as you can see, that was very, very fast. Um, it does feel a lot smoother when you're scrolling, too, on every iOS device I've tried. Um, I think I think Apple is actually doing a lot in terms of trying to make Safari the best browsing experience on a mobile device. It greatly works out a lot, and I think a lot of people will like it as well. Um, and finally, the latest feature that I want to show you, there are some camera features on the iPhone that I'll make a video on later when I get my iPod Touch back. Um, but the last feature I wanted to show you is actually two features. One of them is integrated Twitter. Um, so as you can see, you can simply sign in with your Twitter account, blah, blah, blah. Um, and after you sign in, it will automatically download the app. And if you have a photo or something that you want to share, I'll show you. You simply go into an app, um, click the share button, and as you can see, a new link comes up that says tweet. You simply click tweet, and a little Twitter um, pop-up will come up for you to simply tweet that. So they did integrate Twitter integration which is, wow, that was a little redundant, but they did integrate Twitter, which is great. I think a lot of people will use this. I definitely will, and it's a great feature. And finally, iCloud. In iCloud, essentially what they added is an ability to back up all of your stuff daily. Um, you will never have to hook it up to your computer and back it up. You can back up your mail, contacts, calendars, reminders, everything over the air, and you can even have Find My iPad and stuff like that completely over the air. Um, you can take photos, it will back it up automatically over the air, so it's a great feature. I know a lot of people are going to use this, um, I definitely am. I'm really looking forward to actually starting um, to use it, and I can't actually wait until I get my iPod back, iPod back because then I'm going to be able to use PhotoStream, which is really, really cool. But uh, those are some of the general features in iOS 5, guys. Hopefully you like this video. Um, if you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, and like the video down there in the description, as well as subscribe. Just click the little button up there. I do a lot of Apple videos, and I really enjoy doing it, so thanks, guys. Um, and also, be sure to follow me on Twitter, visit my website, and bookmark it, and like my fan page down there in the description. Greatly helps me out, and I really appreciate it. Um, hopefully, you like this video. I'll have more iOS 5 videos for you in the future. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Catch you in the next one. Peace.